Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thank you for those that are continuing to watch the live feed here on Facebook. We appreciate that very much. We'll continue to grow the show and expose the show as much as we can most of you have been following the show. If you haven't, uh, welcome in. But for almost eight years, the focus has been the same, education and information. We try really hard to have great guests, good information, and content to share with you, the consumer, to, to really to help educate you, inform you more on real estate, anything and everything real estate. And uh, we'd love to have you download the podcast. It's great that you follow us on Facebook and watch us the live feed. But the way to really enjoy the show, we think, is to download the podcast. You could do that at iTunes. Just type in Real Estate Radio Live. It'll come up. Or you can go to Google+, Plus, Stitcher, any of these places. Or you could just go to our website, reradiolive.com, and you can find the, the podcast there. Most of you also that have been following the show, you know, from time to time, we are big fans of giving back in the community. I realize personally when I started the show, everything I do in my business is that uh, I try to work really hard to make sure that we – Understand the element of when we do business in a certain community, we give back to a certain extent. What does that mean? It could mean your time. It could mean money. It could mean, in this case, I've been fortunate to have this vehicle, uh, the podcast and the radio show for years, to have people on from time to time to what we call our giving back segment and do our part as much as we can at Real Estate Radio Live to give back to the community and great causes and organizations. And there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands, of course, of a lot of wonderful causes, most of you know, that have been involved in them. And uh, we're going to talk about one today for sure for that matter. So with that, I want to welcome in uh, Kara Jones with uh, NIF Cure Kidney Society, right? Or International, I should yes. say. NIF Cure Kidney International. Yeah. So welcome in. Good to have you. Thank you so much for inviting me in today. I'm so grateful to have gotten to know you and for all of your support. Yeah, Thank you're, you, Joe. You're welcome. You're, you are welcome. And this is a great cause. And of course it is. There's so many... Great causes out there, and we could go, I mean, you know, from cancer to different diseases, we could go on and on. This is one, of course, uh, near and dear to your heart. So I'd, I guess what I'd like to do first, if you could give the listeners an idea of who you are, how this affected your life with your son, if you could just kind of take us through that journey, if you would, and we could start that, that would be great. Sure, I would be happy to. Yeah. Like Joe said, my name's Kara Jones, and I am the mom of four kids. I have a 23-year-old, a 20-year-old, an 18-year-old, and a 7-year-old, <laughs> three boys and a girl. And it was my 18-year-old back in 2002, so 16 years ago, he was diagnosed with a rare and chronic kidney disease called nephrotic syndrome. Of course, I had never heard of nephrotic syndrome and really hadn't given kidney disease any thought mm-hmm. in my life. And so um, it was when he was two, and he just randomly started getting really sick. I noticed that he was very tired and fatigued, and I was actually potty training him like you do with mm-hmm. two-year-olds. And I just thought he was a great potty trainer, but come to find out with nephrotic syndrome, you don't go to the bathroom as frequently. Mm. And when you do then go to the bathroom, you spill or leak out protein in your urine. And Mm. the protein is a valuable protein that you need to keep in your bloodstream. Mm -hmm. So he was losing protein, fatigue, tired, very irritable. And I just really couldn't quite figure it out. And this had progressed over, I'm not quite sure how long. And one day my mother-in-law was visiting and my son's name, the one with nephrotic syndrome, his name is Christian. His nickname is Cheech. So if I call him that, that's been his nickname for a long time. My mother-in-law said, you know, she saw his belly. It was very Mm -hmm. distended because of all the fluids he was retaining. And she said, this is not good. Uh So I took him to the doctor and thankfully our pediatrician was just amazing and uh, had had some experience with kidney disease and said, you know, I think this might be something called nephrotic syndrome. Wow. So they they kind of detected that right away or at least without an idea of it. Okay. And we were very fortunate in that. 
All right. Again, I'm with uh, Kara Jones, kind enough to spend some time with her talking about the rare disease. And before we unfortunately had some technical difficulties, you were telling us kind of experience. You had mentioned some of the symptoms your son was having. And you took him to the doctor and, and you were blessed. It sounded like your doctor kind of had an idea. So pick us up from where we left sure. off. Sure. Yeah. Our doctor was just amazing. And I still consider myself extremely mm-hmm. lucky. Actually, my son, extremely lucky because there's other families that I know that haven't been because mm-hmm. a lot of times doctors will just say, oh, well, your child's being irritable, yeah. or it's allergies, right. or, you know, let's um, just wait it out and see what happens. And so if you do that, then, you know, you continue to retain all this fluid, and it's mm-hmm. really bad for your whole body. And so we were really lucky that our pediatrician had an idea. And surely, I mean, he just had my son pee on a dipstick, you know, and right then and there, we could tell he was spilling, that's Mm -hmm. leaking out in his urine, a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. So we knew that day something was really wrong, and he connected us with our doctors up at Lucille Packard, Mm -hmm. and our lives have never been the same. Now he was two years old, roughly. He was two years old, three months, Mm -hmm. and come to find out that's a fairly common time for kids to get sick. Mm -hmm. It can happen to adults. But it's more common with children mm-hmm. and more common with boys, too. Really? Yes. Um, however, throughout this journey, I've met moms of daughters. I've met, you know, adult mm-hmm. females and, and adult men yeah. alike, you know, that it, have just right. been diagnosed. So. so it's rare. Is it a rare disease? How many do you know roughly does it uh, affect each year or do you have the... I think roughly it's about 2,000 new patients so diagnosed every year. Yeah. yeah. It's considered a rare and orphan disease. Okay. And uh, there is no known cause, there's no cure, Mm. and very limited treatment options. And so that's also what's made the journey so particularly hard, because the first line of treatment is prednisone or steroids. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you see your little guy on high doses of steroids, you know, that's hard to watch as a mom, and it's really hard on his body. Yeah. You know, and um, he did respond early on to the steroids rather quickly, Mm -hmm. and that got him in remission, but that only lasted for a short period of time because Christian proved to be steroid dependent, so in order for his kidneys to work, he had to be on prednisone, and he proved to be a frequent relapser. They consider one relapse a year frequent, and Mm -hmm. he would have on average like five or six relapses every year. Really? Every year, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of those times we were able to manage with medicine at home and to help the prednisone would Mm kickstart his kidneys to start to work again. But sometimes, for whatever reason, it wouldn't, and Mm -hmm. he'd have to be hospitalized and then get the steroids through an IV. And so that's hard. Well, this is an amazing journey, amazing in a different way, obviously a challenging way. But as we know, when we have children, we'll do anything for them. And I can't imagine, I know how difficult it is just to raise children under normal circumstances sure. and God willing, they stay healthy and all those types. So I can't imagine what you're faced with two years old. So I'm guessing, Kara, that you have the situation where I guess in some ways you're relieved because you say, oh, gee, we know what it is. Right. But then when you start finding out, well, there's really not a cure, there's, as you said, the pregnizone, the steroids, which most of the people that have been involved with that, you know, that's not a pleasant thing as well on a regular basis. So as you started doing this, kind of take us through, is it just still those types of treatments right now as we are fast forward 16 years later? What kind of take us through, I mean, the last 16 years, if you will, not so much in detail, but... Any changes, evolution, any new treatments, anything that has, has come to um, to bear since then? Sure. I mean, yes, within the last 16 years, there has been a lot of excitement or activity or mm-hmm. new progress made with nephrotic syndrome. Not enough because yeah. there still currently isn't a cure and prednisone is still the first line of treatment. Mm-hmm. But there are lots of immunosuppressant drugs that are given to nephrotic syndrome patients. My son has been on five different ones of those. Now, those are great because they can help make his kidneys work, but they also have extremely serious side effects. Mm. I mean, they suppress your immune system. Okay. And um, when you're walking around with a compromised immune system, I mean, that that is not good for your body. And he's also benefited from having IVIG infusions, and those are infusions to help boost his immune system, to help give him a shield to protect him. I see. So he would be less likely to become sick or have a relapse mm-hmm. with his kidneys. 
But I do know that some of the newer medicines that Christian has taken for his nephrotic syndrome, they weren't originally for nephrotic syndrome. Mm -hmm. They came from maybe other forms of treatment. One in particular was a drug that was supposed to be good for rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. Didn't prove to be good for rheumatoid arthritis, but it ended up being good for people with nephrotic syndrome. And so he was able to take that for a year and give his body a little bit of a break from prednisone and kind of give him a chance to grow. Right. during puberty. So research is extremely critical mm-hmm. to help educate the public and help get pharmaceutical companies on board with patients mm-hmm. and clinical trials because you never know what you're going to learn, if it's going right. to benefit nephrotic syndrome or maybe something yeah. else along the line. Along yeah, the so way. what I'd like to do during the show on a more regular basis than we normally do for obvious reasons because this is a, a cause that we all want to try to support and do whatever we can. So those that are out there listening and especially listeners that have been with us for many years, you know, if there's anything you could do in the way of support, uh, donations will be given out. So l- let me do this during the course of the show today. I'd like to at least four or five times remind everybody of the event that's coming up sure. and how they could help. So tell us a little bit about the event. I think it's October 6th. Where? And give us yep. some details and, of how people could help. That's great. Thank <clears throat> you so much. Yeah. Yes. The event is called the Silicon Valley Pig Jig. It is taking... <laughs> some, I know, right? It's a cute, catchy name. It's a corporate amateur barbecue competition. And there we've got live music, too. We have Dylan Scott. He's a country artist. He's our mm-hmm. headliner. We have four other bands that are playing. It's taking place at San Jose Giants Muni mm-hmm. Stadium. We've got the whole stadium there, and it goes from 1 to 9. Tickets are on sale at www.siliconvalleypigjig.com. You can check out our website there. You can see the lineup. You can see the wonderful corporate sponsors mm-hmm. that have been so generous already in helping to get the pig jig going in the Silicon Valley. And That's so we're great. just grateful for everyone's support. Yeah. And all proceeds of the pig jig are going to Nuff Cure Kidney International. That's good to know. Yes. So, Kara, a person could sign up and go by themselves. They could go as a group. I know there's different sponsor levels. You mm-hmm. can take a couple people. You could take eight plus people. You could get a different level. So the best thing is to probably go to the website and just look and see what suits your needs. Yeah, definitely. We've got sponsorship options Mm -hmm. still available if you're interested in a corporate sponsorship, or we've got just general admission ticket sales as well, too, to come into the venue and listen to the live music. We've got 20 different local artisan vendors that Mm -hmm. are going to be there selling their goods. And our goal is to have 25, at least 25 different patient families there. And Mm -hmm. um, so they'll get to mingle. And because having a community for me personally has been so beneficial. And so my dream is to bring other patient families together to help provide support for each other. So let's talk a little bit about that, and that's important, too. So at the event, there's going to be about 25 families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's our goal, and we've got about... Ten confirmed. Wow. We're still. We've got others that I know are coming, but I uh-huh. just got to get that confirmation. Where do the families? Are they around the area or from all over the place, Kara? That come for this? Well, um, most of them are probably within a good maybe 200 mile radius. Okay. I know we've got right. some people coming from Reno and Sacramento mm-hmm. area. And we actually, the Silicon Valley Pig Jig got started because Mm -hmm. of another event that benefits NEFCURE called the Tampa Pig Jig. Mm -hmm. And that got started because of a a young man in Tampa who lost his kidneys to nephrotic syndrome and his Mm -hmm. friends just were so sad to see him go through that. So they started the Tampa Pig Jig. So we'll have some of the Tampa guys out Mm -hmm. and they'll be representing their friend Will who has struggled with nephrotic syndrome. So they'll be coming. So we've got people coming from all over. So it's exciting, definitely. Good good stuff. Well, I want to congratulate you, but also commend you. And I want to ask you a little bit about, again, it's one thing. We all know how it's tough to parenting. Then uh, you're faced with this, you and your husband and your family at two years old. So there's a number of different ways you could handle this. You know, we, and I say us, any of us, right, we could handle it. We don't know how we're going to handle it until we're faced with it. You were faced with it. And, you know, we could work as hard as we can and just, you know, do what we can for our children, but stay behind the scenes. And it could affect us in a way that, you know, it paralyzes us. And, you know, it, even though we want to do things, it could paralyze us and that would allow us maybe not to do some of the things like you're doing. So I guess my point is it's remarkable that you were faced with this and then somehow you found the strength, you and your family and yourself particularly, 
to take this on as a, as an, a huge project because number one, you're still raising a family, you still have to <laughs> you're doing all the things we still have to do. Still got to cook dinner. <laughs> on top of that, now uh, you're spending a lot of time and energy for this cause. So talk a little bit about is that something that you didn't know about yourself until you were faced with it? Is it something you could look back in your life and go, you know what, I was always kind of this type of person. I get up and I do what needs to get done. Tell me a little, because that's a, that's a character that yeah. not everybody has. Yeah, that's a great question. And, you know, I'm not really quite sure if I had this in me before or if this, you know, nephrotic syndrome mm-hmm. brought this out of me. Right. But I didn't really get the fire lit to become an advocate until my son was in fourth grade. So I guess you're about 10 in fourth grade. So it had already been, you know, eight years. He had just gotten out of the hospital and he was so sick. And, you know, my doctor always said, you have to treat him like you do any of your other kids. Mm -hmm. And so the rule was, if you're not throwing up and you don't have a fever, you have to go to school. Mm -hmm. So I had to force him to go to school, even though I knew he didn't feel great. But my gut told me he's just going to feel cruddy laying on the couch at home. You might as well be at school, and it mm-hmm. might take his mind off of things. And I wanted him to be as normal as any other kid. Mm-hmm. But it was really hard to watch him walk in the classroom with his head hung so low. Right. And I was devastated as a mom, and I was kind of broken myself. But I went home that day. Sorry, it's emotional. It's all right. And I just said, I'm not going to sit by any longer and just give him medicine that I know is damaging his body, Mm -hmm. even though it was helping it too, and just take him to doctor's appointments and just be at the mercy of, Mm -hmm. you know, other people. I'm going to get involved. And I did. I just called NEFCARE and I said, I'm going to organize a walk. Um, That's kind of how all of my advocacy got started with organizing local Mm -hmm. community walks. Didn't even tell my husband until he got home for dinner that day. I was like, (laughs) okay, we're doing this. And that was back in 2010. Uh And the support from my friends and family and the community, Mm -hmm. even just with our little local community walks, was just so inspiring and just almost like a therapy for me too because I was focused on doing something good. Mm -hmm. Even though taking care of my child is like the best thing you can do, it was a different type of good. Mm -hmm. And it just allowed me the opportunity to not kind of wallow in my sorrow and rejoice in the community and the people around me that really... Get that strength, huh? Yeah, Yeah. it's that strength. Well, sorry if that was tough, but I thought it was important because, yeah. you know, a lot of the listeners, and the reason I did that is not only to, to get a little bit of an insight on what you've done and kind of what triggers a person to do those things, but you never know. Someone that's listening to this podcast may be faced with something, you know, it may not be the same sure. disease, but it could be something else. Yes. And all of us, all of us need help in different ways, for sure, in any different ways we can. So. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. What we're going to do is we're going to take a real quick break for our podcast, and then we'll be back with you to start back up in just a minute. Thank you. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. How would you like the opportunity to secure a record low interest rate while buying and or selling your home? In addition, how would you like to save 20% or more on your entire real estate transaction? Finally, how would you like to bundle all your real estate services in one location? Well, now you can achieve this with BundleSelect.com. That's right, save on real estate lending and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will save you thousands of dollars by bundling real estate lending and title services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. I'm here to tell you BundleSelect.com is the best way to save money on real estate. By bundling services, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Visit BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with the national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker License Number 0046-6902. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. We're in studio today talking to Kara Jones, and we're talking about uh, 
Nephrotic syndrome, is that correct? Nephrotic. Nephrotic 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 syndrome. syndrome. Okay. It's a tough one to pronounce, but it's a tough disease as well. And Kara is spending some time with us talking about this. Again, this is a giving back segment. We do this from time to time, and it's really important. We don't do it because we think we have to, or we don't do it like we got to check it off the box or the list. I do it personally because I just believe that all of us, no matter what we do in any way, we could give back to the community. And in this case, I'm fortunate enough to have a podcast, radio show, and different communication vehicle to allow to do that with some people that could be passing out flyers, with other people that could be making calls. In your case, you guys have a big event coming up we're talking about as well. Tell me about how your son is doing right now. You just is exciting. You just told me he went to college. But talk a little bit first, if you can, care about when you say, you know, some of the setbacks or some of the relapses, what are those like and how do those affect him? And then give us an idea how he's doing now. And I know he just started college. So Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, when he has a relapse, every relapse is different, too. When he has a severe relapse, he can miss like a month of school Mm. just from being so, so sick. And, you know, it sounds like trivial stuff, but fatigue, severe headaches, uh, nausea. Oh, the poor boy has suffered from chronic GI issues his whole Mm. life. And then, of course, if he has to be hospitalized because the kidneys aren't working Mm -hmm. and we've got to go that route, that's bad, too. And then all the side effects from those medicines. One time when he was hospitalized in, I think, ninth grade, he had a really bad um, relapse. And um, he ended up getting, like, prednisone-induced acne. Mm. I mean, just everywhere, all over his body. I've just felt so sad for him to have Mm -hmm. to go to school um, like that. You know, it's just painful enough. And then prednisone causes a lot of bloating and um, weight gain and the moon face. And so... You know, there's a lot of physical Mm -hmm. characteristics that just are not fun to deal with. But uh, he is doing well. He did get to go to France for the summer with Mm -hmm. a friend for a month. And interestingly enough, he had been in remission for a whole year. But three days before he left to go to France, he started to relapse. Mm. And so I, of course, was very nervous, wondering how he was going to do on his own for the Mm -hmm. first time, managing all of his medicines on Mm -hmm. his own and the prednisone and everything. But he really stepped up and he took his medicines on time when he was supposed to. He stayed in contact with his doctors and he was able to get himself back in remission in about nine days and then taper himself off of the prednisone. So that was a real, in a weird way, a blessing. for me to be able to send him off to college, knowing that if he could handle a relapse in a foreign country, that he would be okay, you know. That was Um, a good sample. Yeah, it was. Um, So when um, these relapses take place, there's no idea when you're, you're, there's no idea when they're coming, right? So they could, you could say they could, without a year, months, months. All right, so no triggering for that they know of anyway. Yeah, it was interesting when he was little, you know, like six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mm-hmm. He, it's going to sound odd, but this was the only thing we could actually pinpoint. Mm-hmm. He was very prone to getting styes in his mm. eyes, and when he would get a sty, it seemed like he would always relapse. Interesting. But yeah, like I said, some were less severe and some were very severe. Yeah. So there really is no rhyme or reason. Granted. The healthier you can keep yourself, the better. I mean, if he does get super sick with whatever, that he is more likely to then relapse. So he needs to keep himself healthy, hydrated, taking his medicines. (laughs) Good, very good. Well, again, we want to, uh, the main thing is just keep getting the word out, how we could help. A big event coming up October 6th. Again, remind the listeners the website and how they could go there and some of the information about that. Sure, definitely. Yes, spreading awareness has always been crucial right. to everything. So thank you so much for You're the welcome. opportunity. You just go to SiliconValleyPigJig.com. You'll learn all about the event there. You can even learn more about our story. We also have several other patient family stories up mm-hmm. there too. So that might inspire some of you to learn a little bit more about it. We've got tickets on sale on the website. There's several different ticket level options. Okay. We also are still looking for corporate sponsors if anyone would like to get involved that way and you can find that also on the website as well too and most of you know and i'm not a cpa and i'm not going to give tax advice but my understanding is anytime you donate to something like this is 100 percent tax deductible again i'll i always have to say because i'm not i'm not a cpa and you have to be careful about giving tax advice i'm not doing that but that is one of the great things about these organizations that really do good Many cases, I think in most cases, there it's a tax-deductible event, and that makes it 
even better for people that are good enough to give back. And I would say also for the people out there that raise money for their own causes, too. I know I have. I know some friends. All of us have been touched by so many different diseases. You know what it's like. We know what it's like. And I think that's kind of a message I want to send today, too. And as I talk to you, is that anybody that's dealt with something close to their family, you know, whether it be, again, a sibling, a, a child, a parent, a spouse, it doesn't matter. You know when they're going through a tough time. You know what it's like. You know the energy it takes. You know the village it takes. You know the raising resources and all this. So I guess my plea is, you know, for those that have been through this before, you know what it's like. And so you know what it's like to what it means to get support. And in this case, it's the financial support, but it's awareness. And I love the fact that they're having this event and it's a great place to come and have a lot of fun, eat some good food and for a great cause. Do they do these around the United States on a regular basis? Is that right? I think you There said. is another one. It's called the Tampa Pig Jig. That's okay. been in existence. They're going on their eighth year. Okay. And it was a dream of Tampa and Neff Cure Kidney International to find another spot to mm-hmm. do it, Pig Jig. And since I've been so involved with Neff Cure and wanted to kind of do something different than a walk, uh, we decided to work together, all of us. Mm-hmm. And so we're the second. We're the second Pig Jig, Silicon <laughs> Valley Pig Jig. Yes. And so will this be, is this the first time it's been here? This okay. is the very first time. So is it going to be an annual? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be an annual, um, and it's probably always going to be the first or second week in October. Mm-hmm. This year it's October 6th. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, we think that's a great time of year to, yeah, it is. to get out there. And now, do you guys also, I'm guessing you told me you have 20-plus people that are kind enough to give their time and energy for this Oh, cause yeah. and to help you because it's a lot of work. Oh, I mean, my. it's a lot of work. Even though there's an organization, there's still, I know that I've been involved in some of this stuff with fundraising. It, it is a lot. It takes a lot. And it takes a lot of people that have the right mind and spirit to help as well. So do you guys look for volunteers still from time to time, or is this always a good time? I mean, can people volunteer? Oh, that is an excellent question. I'm so glad you did. Yes, we definitely need volunteers. And on the website, there is a volunteer tab. So there's a lot of different little shifts that you can do, Mm -hmm. different areas of volunteering. But yes, the whole day itself on October 6th is going to be run by volunteers. We will have people there from San Jose Giants because that's where the event is held. Mm -hmm. But yes, we are looking for and would love to have volunteers. So if you're inclined to do that, please check that out. That's great. Yes. So what keeps, uh, I mean, maybe the obvious, but I don't want to say the obvious, what keeps you going? Obviously, you've, this is, uh, you'd mentioned when, you know, son was a certain age, you just said, I got to do something more. There's something that has to be, we got to come up with a secure. I mean, there's all kinds of things that probably went through your mind to really trigger you to step into action like this and take this. So how do you find the energy to keep it going? Do you just wake up every day? Do you remind yourself or are you on autopilot now? How does that work? That's a good question. I feel like I'm constantly inspired, not only by my son, but by all the other patient Mm -hmm. families that I've connected with. You know, through Facebook, I belong to a lot of different nephrotic syndrome groups, Mm -hmm. and I've met so many other moms or kids along the way. And there's so many of them whose story is, you know, even more challenging than my son's. Mm -hmm. And they continue to inspire me because, like I tell my all my kids, you know, I'm not just doing this for Christian, for our son Cheech. I'm doing this for all the other kids out there right. or, or or adults mm-hmm. or other people who might be affected by it right. because I just know how nasty and hard it is on child suffering or on the entire family and you know so right. I'm I'm inspired every day to just try to keep on spreading awareness and you never know when that right um, when that right person's going to mm-hmm. come along or when the right pharmaceutical drug mm-hmm. is going to get to go to clinical trial right. and so I just never lose hope or faith that that's going to happen. Good. So where did Cheech come from? That's a good question. He, okay, so our daughter Sarah, they're okay. two years apart. She could not say Christian when okay. he was born. And so she always would call him like Chichin. <laughs> and then it just kind of went to Cheechy. That's and then funny. it just kind of went to Cheech. Yeah, okay. And so a lot of the fundraising stuff I've done has always been through Team Cheech. Okay. And his doctors call him Cheech. His teachers at school. So it just kind of suits his personality, too. Yeah. I yes. know that, that, that sticks for sure. Yes. And the organization's great. We're going to raise, you know, you're going to raise a lot of money um, mm-hmm. for a great cause. We'll, we'll give that information again. 
But what if someone's listening to this podcast and they think, oh my gosh, you know, I just found out my child or my aunt, my uncle, my cousin, right? It could affect anybody. Sure. And we, we don't want to assume just because this is a big event you've been working on for a long time. There could be people right here in the Silicon Valley, thousands of people download this podcast a month. Mm-hmm. There could be someone that's either listening or they know that maybe just was inflicted by this and all of a sudden, oh my God, I think this is what I'm hearing about from my aunt and uncle, again, or whatever. Is it still for them to reach out for support, like you're saying, is it still best to go to this website or contact you, or what would be their course of action? Sure. You could definitely reach out to me. I okay. would be happy that. However, I would also suggest that you go to nefcure.org. Okay. Nefcure Kidney International, they're the only organization that's committed exclusively to nephrotic syndrome. Okay. And yes, if you think, uh, or if you've just recently been diagnosed or diagnosed a while ago and haven't heard of mm-hmm. nefcure, I would really encourage you to, to go to their website. Um, you can find on Facebook. Facebook, the mm-hmm. nephrotic syndrome family groups, or reach out to me. I am right. happy. I've talked to many of patients or moms or dads throughout mm-hmm. the years, and I'd be happy to try to connect you. I know personally just being able to talk to other moms or patients about the medicines that you've taken, mm-hmm. the side effects, it's just helped me so much. Right. And, and if anyone could benefit from that, I'd be happy to help. Very good. All right. Well, we have a couple of minutes before we finish up. Again, on one more time, if you can give the listeners the website, any other information, anything else you want to share with us here today before we wrap things up? I mean, uh, the main thing I want to make sure we do the best we can to get this information out. You never know who's listening. You never know who could help, right? And that's the whole idea of just continuing the course like you're doing every day. Any other message or any other thoughts you'd like to share before we finish up today? Sure. I'd just, first of all, like to say thank you. It's so great. And, um, you know, until I knew how important your kidneys were, I mean, I think mm. I feel like we just kind of take them for granted. So don't take your kidneys for granted and your health, you know, because you just never know when mm-hmm. you might not have them. And it's just wonderful knowing that we have so much support from right. the community Go to our website. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. We've got the Silicon Valley Pig Jig stuff up there. And we're just trying to spread the good word and help save kidneys and save lives with with it. And again, going to be some great food, great barbecues. They're going to be judged. They're not professionals, but they're going to be people that could really barbecue, let me tell you. So come out there and enjoy that. And uh, also entertainment yes. for those that love music. Yeah, we've got five bands. Uh, some of them are local. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got Ryan Scripps. He's a local guy. He was on a couple of seasons of The Voice a couple oh, of seasons ago okay. on Team right. Blake. He's going to play. We've got Haley and Michaels. They're a great duet that are going to be singing for us. And then we've got uh, Dylan Scott, great. who's our headliner. So All right. It's going to be great. Good. All right, Kara, thank you again, and I think we're going to have you back in next week or another time, right? We're going yeah. to have you back and try to pass on this good information. Again, I would uh, encourage you to do whatever you can. I know there's a lot, you know, in, in this day and age, let's face it, everybody's getting hit with, you know, raising money and can you give money in time. But what I would say is, you know, it doesn't always have to be money. It could be your time. That's why I brought up the volunteers. You could always use volunteers. And there's a lot of different ways, and maybe you can't or not in the right time, but maybe a family, friend, or coworker might be able to do this. So I would say kind of extend yourself, do whatever you can to do what you can uh, that feels right to be able to help, and uh, this is a great cause. And So thanks for coming in today, and we'll have you back in a week or so, and we'll, uh, we'll keep the message going for you. Sounds great. Thank right. you so You're much. You're welcome. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, take care. Have a great afternoon. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.